lot of people will join us soon. So first of all, welcome everybody. It's very nice to see all of you year round and to see very nice uh, familiar face after a long break. Ah, we have to go on Zoom. Zoom. Okay, I'll start again. Morning, everybody, and thanks with, to be with us, also from the online, for the online participant. So we start this workshop with the, just a brief introduction of who we are, and then uh, there will be also an introduction for you this afternoon. There will be time for, your, for you to introduce yourself uh, just after lunch. So I am Marika Coppola. I am a research scientist here in ICTP. I'm working here since uh, many years. And uh, I mainly work in the um, Earth System Physics section, and I work with regional climate modeling, mainly coupled with impact model, like water resource modeling. We, we also work with a lot of stakeholders, like energy company and insurance. And uh, so we cover this uh, part of the section. Uh, in this, this workshop was organized, as you know, many of you know already, already before the COVID, but it was canceled twice, unfortunately, due to the COVID, but finally we made it. And uh, in this afternoon, we will go more deeply into the aim of the workshop, what we expect, what it will be uh, there. I just give you, uh, give the floor to the other uh, director of the workshop, the organizer. The first one is uh, Professor Rosha Rasinger. Please introduce yourself. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Roshan Karansinga. I'm from uh, IG Delft and Delta Aris in the Netherlands. Um, so I had the uh, pleasure of working with uh, Erika and Alexia and Robert, and who is not here, uh, and a lot of others uh, on Chapter 12 of the AR6, uh, Working Group 1 report, uh, which we, Alex will talk a lot about um, in the next presentation. Um, so yeah, by profession, I'm a coastal engineer. I focus a lot on... I uh, focus on uh, mostly on climate change impacts on coast, and uh, I've been trying to develop uh, efficient models that can uh, project how uh, coastlines will uh, respond to climate change over 100 year time scales. Um, so I think uh, that's enough for now, so I'll pass, pass now, Alex. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everybody, and welcome from, uh, especially those who have traveled long distances to be here. Uh, my name is Alex Ruane. I am the co-director of the Climate Impacts Group at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York City. Um, and uh, like many of us up here, actually all of us were part of the IPCC Working Group 1. You'll learn all about these acronyms and, and uh, what they all mean in a moment here. Um, my own personal work is especially on applying climate information for agricultural applications. Uh, so you'll hear a lot about agriculture on Friday um, and uh, looking forward to, to getting to know all of you here. Uh, let me pass over to Anna now. Oh, actually, Robert, you first, please. Well, th thank you. Uh, my apologies for not being here today. I will join with pleasure um, uh, Wednesday. So um, I'm Robert Votard uh, from IPSL in Paris. So I work with my colleagues, Alex and uh, Roche and Erica and Anna. Uh, at uh, the IPCC level, and my specialty is attribution of extreme events, especially related to heat and uh, and impact. So we'll have a session on uh, heat and uh, health effects. Thank you. Hello. So um, I finished the introductions. I'm Anna Pirani. I am the head of the technical support unit for IPCC Working Group One. So it was a very privileged role to have had to sort of coordinate the implementation of the assessment of the physical science basis of climate change. And um, I'm based here, well, hosted by ICTP. I'm very lucky they give me an office, though the team was in Paris. And now I'm working for the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, which is an Italian research institute on climate risk assessment and adaptation strategies. So um, we're very happy to see you all together because one of the very stimulating aspects of the IPCC is the intersections between different um, parts of the world, communities, different scientists coming together. And we had the, the privilege of having this chapter, chapter 12, which Roche, Alex, Robert, and Erika were working on. 
that interfaced with working group two on the assessment of an impact, vulnerability, and adaptation. And so we thought this is a perfect time, now the assessment finished, to bring together these two parts of the world of climate science together and really dig into more this interface between climate information and going further in, in adaptation information. So uh, thank you very much from my side, and I hand over to the speakers. And I think it's Roche first, or? It's me. Okay, so just a few hints and welcome information for all of you, and then we will start the official program. Uh, so we, just to give you a bit of background, what is ICTP, where you are now? So ICTP is uh, an institute that has been founded by a Nobel laureate, Abdul Salam, and uh, we try to combine world-class research here with uh, the mission to build science and capacity in the developing world. We are under the UNESCO governance together with the Atomic Agency and the Italian government, so it's, uh, we are under the tripartite agreement. And what we do is, uh, in, every, in our everyday life, we do our research, as you have heard before. We have an education mission and also cooperation with all the country uh, around the world. Now, just moving to something more practical. So we are here in the campus. This is where you are. Some of you will need to go later on up to the building number four, that is the uh, uh, finance office. So if you need to go there, you can go today on Wednesday and Friday in the morning and the afternoon, and there is a lunch break in the between. Uh, if you not want to know more, you can ask uh, Victoria that is just outside here. She will help you during all the week. So the program you can find online. So this is the link probably you have seen already. For every day you have a program. If we have uh, uh, a change of anything, the change will be reflected over there. The slide of the presentation will be also loaded where the program is. So you will see at the end a link for each of the presentation for the people that want to share it. And then uh, one last thing. So tomorrow we will have a social events in the afternoon. So there will be a good occasion for us just to chit chat, speak each other, try to know each other, and uh, have a bit of social events. And then this is the forecast for the week. Unfortunately, it's not a very nice week. It's a very atypical week in Trieste. You see that uh, we have the Today it's rainy, mostly of the, all the day, then uh, maybe tomorrow a little bit better, but it's improving. You see the temperature is rising. We are actually a little bit below the, the um, seasonal average as a, temperature, as a maximum temperature, but we will we'll recover by Wednesday. So do not worry, you will see some sunshine during the week. If you have anything to ask or any problem, please write to the usual SMR. This is the usual email you have used during all these months to interact with the registration and the conference support. So anything you need, please write to them, okay? And now I leave the floor to Roche for the first talk, and then we move. How does this work? Um, so, uh, good morning again, and welcome to this workshop. Um, so, first of all, we thought um, we'll uh, introduce you about how IPCC actually operates. A lot of people, I mean, people read about the IPCC, people use the report a lot, but 
Um, you know, some people have come to me uh, many years ago and said, well, where is the IPCC located? Like, there's a physical location for it where every one of us are working together, but that, that is really not the case. So it's a very complicated process. Um, so this first presentation is about how, uh, how the IPCC uh, process worked in the AR6, at least for working group one, uh, which is what the, the working group that we were all part of. Oh, well, sorry, not we, there are also working group two people, but I was in working group one. Um, so, and, yes, what's happening? Yeah, but uh, I want to go to the next one. Oh, okay, right. Uh, so in this presentation, uh, I will go through these things. Uh, what is the IPCC and what does it do? The brief history of IPCC, its mission and assessment cycles, and the processes and timelines of the working group reports, and also what's new in uh, AR6 working group one. A lot of people ask that question. Uh, so yeah, why, why another assessment? Um, so what is IPCC and what does it do? Uh, it, it stands for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, that's what IPCC stands for. Uh, it's a United Nations body for assessing the science. I will come back to this word assessing. It's an important distinction between assessing and reviewing. Uh, so assessing the science related to climate change. It was created by WMO and the UNAP in 1988. So it's been around for quite some time now. Uh, it's basically an organization of governments that are all members of the UN, uh, so roughly about 195 uh, countries. Um, and it provides regular assessments of the scientific basis of climate change, the, its, its impacts and future risk in, uh, spread around, uh, spread in uh, several working groups, and also adaptation and mitigation. Uh, so the main objective of IPCC is to provide governments uh, with scientific information that they can use to develop uh, climate policies, climate adaptation strategies, uh, mitigation targets, things like that. Uh, they are also a key input into the COP, uh, the conference of, COP stands for conference of parties, yes. Uh, that happens almost every year now. So that's where uh, governments uh, agree to various uh, greenhouse gas emission mitigation uh, targets and things like that. Um, the mission, I won't read this, but uh, well, uh, that's, that's the stated mission of uh, IPCC that you will see on the website. Uh, it's again assessing um, uh, scientific, technical, and socioeconomic information. Uh, so, uh, Coming to this word assessment, um, we really have to distinguish ourselves as not a review. We, we do not express uh, summaries or opinions or things like that. We assess all the uh, peer-reviewed, as far as possible, peer-reviewed uh, scientific information that's available at the time uh, of an assessment. We have a cutoff date, and uh, so everything before published before that cutoff date is assessed, and based on that assessment, we will then assign certain likelihoods um, and confidence levels on how certain um, climate, climate change drivers, uh, indicators, uh, adaptation measures, things like that, how, how they will uh, be affected, how, how they will uh, progress in the future. So we, we provide confidence statements and likelihoods. Uh, I will get into that a bit later, but uh, we, we, we really are assessment. Uh, it does not do original research. So whatever graphs and things like the maps you see in the IPCC report, they are not our original research. We are, in fact, not allowed to present original research. Uh, we can bring together things from different papers, different studies, and make a cohesive, bigger picture. Uh, and uh, we do also do not express opinions. Uh, that's a big no. Uh, our reports through, through a, a cycle of three drafts uh, are reviewed by thousands of experts and governments. Um, so at the end of the day, then we, uh, we, we are compelled to respond to every review comment that we, uh, that we get. I think we got something like uh, 
70,000 comments over the process, I think I can't remember now. So we have to respond to every comment. There's a huge Excel sheet that we have to uh, deal with. It's okay. um, with colors. With colors. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a nightmare, actually, practically, to, to deal with that. Uh, and um, so IPC reports are policy relevant, but are not policy prescriptive. What that means is the, the, the findings in the IPC report are, are expected to be useful to, uh, to develop policies or update policies, but IPCC does not prescribe policies that you should do this or you should do that. Uh, the reports project, uh, present projections of future climate change and also associated risk and discuss the implications of response options, but uh, they do not tell policymakers what actions to take. So, <coughs> why all this interest in climate change? Someone could ask. And um, so, this graph just shows the temperature change, measured temperature change from uh, the pre-industrial time, so from about 1850 to 2010. And you can see uh, here, 1850, so up to about the 1940s, it's uh, you know, going up and down, but pretty stable, but after that, it's really going up. And uh, so that's why there is such a lot of interest, and also, uh, this is a nice graphic. Actually, I got it off Twitter some, some time ago which shows uh, in probability density functions, I, I think I can assume that people here know what pro probability density functions are. Um, so it shows the temperature change uh, globally over land and over ocean in decades from the 1880s to 2010. So you can see clearly globally over land and o o in the ocean the temperature is uh, clearly changing, the PDFs are moving to the right. Uh, so not only uh, temperature, but also sea level has been rising. Uh, and in our assessment, we have this result that uh, concludes with a high confidence that the sea level has risen faster since 1900 than over any prior century in at least the last 3,000 years. So that's uh, quite a... Um, strong conclusion, and that's based on um, a lot of evidence at the tide gauges around the world. So here, uh, again, you see a, a graph of sea level change over the last uh, 2,500 years. And you can see, again, it goes up and down, but since about here, since about nine, uh, what is that? About 1900, I think, yeah, it really goes up very fast. So, uh, but the measured global mean sea level rise from 19, uh, from the uh, start of the 1900s to almost now, 2018, is about 20 centimeters. What is in gray is the, uh, is the confidence limits. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's accelerating. Um, so if you look at the sea level rise, the, this is the global mean sea level rise, so averaging all over the world. If you look at the 70 years from 1900 to 1971, the, the rate of increase is 1.3 millimeters per year. If you compare that to the rate of increase of sea level uh, from 2006 till now, it's almost triple. So it's really accelerating. Uh, now I earlier mentioned that uh, we use confidence and likelihood in IPCC assessment. There's, there's a lot of meaning to it. It's, it's not just uh, some term that we put out of the air. It, uh, it's done after a lot of consideration. There's a, there's a method to that madness, so to speak. Uh, so first of all, we, on a certain topic, we will look at all the peer review literature. We will look at data sets that are available. Um, so like here, so we, we, have, we have this thing called lines of evidence. We will look at observations, experiments, uh, process understanding, uh, statistics and models, projections. So we will look at all of those things and then um, we will first make, it, make a call whether there's sufficient evidence and agreement to evaluate confidence. Sometimes there isn't. Like, so if the literature is all over the place, then we don't have a lot of confidence. We don't have enough, enough material to, 
uh, make a statement on confidence, then we don't. But if we do um, have like observations, uh, attributions, uh, attribution studies and projections that are kind of going in the same direction, then we can go a little bit further and we can evaluate confidence based on this matrix structure. So we look at then uh, on, on the y-axis agreement and on the x-axis evidence. And if, for example, there's a lot of evidence and a lot of agreement uh, in observations, attributions, and projections, then we can say we have high confidence. So these colors indicate the level of confidence we will assign. On the other hand, if we have low agreement and very, very limited evidence, then we have low confidence. Um, so that's what these confidence statements mean. Uh, we have a lot of uh, arguments in the process uh, in coming to a confidence statements to put in our, in our writing. A lot of discussions, sometimes a three, four hours discussion on one confidence statement. Uh, then if we have high confidence, then only we can go into likelihood statements. And that's, that's again, if we have some kind of uh, probabilistic results or ensemble results, we need to have something quantitative to go by. It, it cannot be done by like one single data point. So if we have uh, probabilistic results projections, then we can go into uh, talking about likelihoods. Then you would have seen in the reports we have things like this, virtually certain, likely. So they all mean something statistically. Um, I will not dwell further on that, except yeah, just to make sure that you understand there's a lot of meaning behind uh, confidence and likelihood statements. Um, next, about the IPCC history, it started in 1988 when it was uh, formed, and the first assessment report came out in 1980, and now we, are, we have just finished the AR6 cycle, and the AR7 cycle is starting, I think, this month or next month. Um, so the, uh, the IPCC tries to then align these rep the, the time uh, in which these reports come out with uh, certain um, other uh, global activities. For example, the second assessment report was timed so that it could feed into the Kyoto Protocol, uh, and AR5 fed into the Paris Agreement, uh, which, is, which was very important in establishing mitigation targets. And our assessment, AR6, uh, feeds into the UNFCCC global stock take, which is expected to happen this year. So the steps in uh, the IPC, in creating IPCC reports, this, which go through many different steps. Um, so it starts with the with the scoping of of uh, of the report. So we, we get like a well, well, first of all, the bi the bureau and nominated experts and uh, observer organizations create a scoping document, and then uh, that. Uh, the outline is approved by the Bureau and I think also the U UN, actually. And then comes the stage where uh, the authors are nominated. And, and that is done by these IPCC focal points in each country. And some authors are invited, some people, then other people can put their hands up. Uh, and then the authors are selected based on set criteria. Uh, and then uh, the, the process is established. In that, then we are all called together. We have uh, four lead author meetings that happen during the process. So just after the first lead author meeting, that we create a first draft that's very fast, like three months, really a, a, a raw draft. And that goes out to review the expert review of the first order draft. So that's, uh, that gives us then pointers on what, how to, how to uh, progress further. Then we build on that, make a second order draft. And that is then sent out to, re to review by governments and experts. And, and based on the comments that we get, we improve it. And then it goes to uh, the final draft. And, and then at that stage, we also draft the summary of policymakers, which finally goes to government review. All governments review this, the final draft of the, uh, the SPM. And then we have this uh, approval and acceptance of the report that is also done by all the member state governments. So that's a very uh, long and arduous process. Basically, every sentence in the summary of policymaker, one by one, uh, has to be approved. Finally, then we publish the report. So this whole thing takes about three and a half years. Um, uh, I think I'm, I have to finish up soon, so I, maybe I will uh, stop after this slide. Just uh, uh, to explain to you the structure of the IPCC teams, uh, so the, uh, the whole IPCC, the, the main IPCC assessment report, we also have special reports, but this, this is the, uh, 
the main assessment report that I'm talking about, we, we will uh, usually have three working groups. Working group one, which deals more with the physical sciences. Working group two, which focuses more on adaptation. And working group three, which is on mitigation. And in each of these working groups, there will be a number of chapters, 12, 13 like that. In working group one, we had 12 chapters and the IPCC atlas, which uh, Richard sitting here led with uh, some other colleagues. And in each of these working groups, we have uh, chairs, we have a bureau, and we have a technical support unit. Uh, they are the, 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 the management team that really manages how the process works. And then we have, uh, in the science part, we have the coordinating lead authors, usually two to three per chapter. And we have lead authors, about 10 to 15 per chapter. And then we have a very key uh, group of people here called chapter scientists who do a really a lot of work. These are usually postdoc level people. Maybe some of you can end up in such, such positions. They, are re they really help us with getting all the figures together and you know, making sure we stay on time and uh, we really owe a lot to them, these young people. And then as the, progress, as, as the process goes through, we also uh, 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 call out to some uh, number of contributing authors to contribute in specific uh, uh, parts of the chapter. So uh, that, could lead up, that, that could end up easily 30 to 50 contributing authors per chapter, or sometimes even more. So shall I stop there, Erika? Well, it's 10.30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. We will open for question at the end of the three of us before breaking for coffee. Okay? So keep your question for before coffee.